Excellency President of the Republic of Angola, João Manuel Gonçalves Lourenço, Excellency First Lady of the Republic of Angola, Madame Ana Dias Lourenço, Excellency Vice President of the Republic, Esperança Costas, Excellency President of IPU, Excellency General Secretary of IPU, uh, Special Envoy of UN, Excellencies, Senators, Chairs and Presidents of Parliament, members of IPU, Excellencies, uh, MPs, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Today, this, which will be said as an historical day, not only for the Angolan Parliament, but also for our country, it is time to start with the 147th IPU Assembly in our beautiful and hostful country, our capital of Angola. With, with great satisfaction, on behalf of the Angolan people, on behalf of the 220 MPs of the National Assembly, I have the honor and privilege to receive you with open arms in Luanda. We would like to greet each and every one of you present at this meeting that unite parliamentarians of all corners of the planet. Please be embraced by Africa. Receive the warm embrace of Africa from our continent and in particular of the delegations of the IPU and especially of the Portuguese-speaking countries where the permanent secretary is hosted here. It has been over 12 months of preparation that unites over 1,700 delegates from all over the world, which shows uh, the willingness to build dialogue points, human values, universal values that we should cultivate and preserve in great challenges globally in the 21st century. It is the first time that the IPU assembly is hosted in an African country of a Portuguese-speaking uh, country. The last one was hosted six decades ago in Brazil. Another aspect to emphasize is that we have, for the first time, four candidates of uh, female uh, candidates, Malawi, Senegal, Somalia, and Tanzania, that are concurring for the chair of IPU. I'd like to urge the candidates that they should prove uh, political maturity and should maintain uh, ethics of the parliament so that we can choose the IPU president democratically. We had a difficult moment globally where the military conflicts have been challenging the 21st century. Being asked parliamentary and being called to pronounce ourselves about the conflicts globally with a common voice to assure peace and to preserve its peace and to reaffirm our commitment with justice and the need to reinforce the institutions that should be the bossula to drive our actions as parliamentarians with whom we each our bondage with the voters that we represent in their fights, in their desires and expectations make us uh, faithful depositories of a legend that we should preserve and that we should be present at all decisions because we are asked for a common good. There's an African proverb that says, in, uh, during crisis, the wise build solidarity, cohesion, friendship, and this should be over the walls of intolerance, uh, indifference, and um, Pride. Uh, solidarity is agent and humanitarian help is needed to save hum human 
life. Tomorrow we might not be in justice without peace. So we should observe this principle so that we can have justice because only justice leads to peace. There's no peace without justice. There's no justice without pardon. There's no pardon without love. Therefore, we should believe that at all time we should renovate, we should believe. We should not ignore that we are in a global context of war that provokes destructuring and fragility of the democratic entities and justice, permanent violation of human rights, fundamental human rights. Therefore, we should believe that peace is the only way to follow. The, con the military conflict that the world experienced currently in the East of Africa, Middle East, it's in a very high level of hostilities. Conflicts in many African countries and other parts of the world have been affecting millions of people and destroying the soil of humanity for a safe world and Pacific, which is compromising the successes of the international diplomacy mechanisms in parliamentary initiatives. Therefore, we need strong institutions led by strong men and women that are able to bring reasons to subsist to the development of our countries and that should alert all for the dramas of the youth that is drowning in the oceans in a search for greener pastures and those fundamental rights and infrastructures that are being destroyed by weapons that do not spare defenseless people. Uh, to assure peace, the f feeling of justice and the need of the a institution's role should be the basis to guide our, our actions as parliamentarian. We should not spare efforts to advocate uh, with our governments and the justice entities to have a dignified posture of respect to human nature to fulfill the law with judicial actuation that is impartial. The through a strong entities that act based on moral principles, ethicals, and good uh, costumes. Our fight should be to live in a free world, a better world, with less asymmetries. That means in some parts of the world that leads people to misery and absolute poverty. This goes through a securing fundamental freedom. Let's keep on seeking for action for peace and have the basis of the implementations of the Sustainable Development Goals and also ensure the exercise of freedom, uh, food security, f uh, world safety, uh, energy crisis based on climate change, because this is also on our agenda. Therefore, we greet our program, My Planet, My Parliament. Another concern in our country that also needs to be faced is gender equality, youth inclusion, uh, trans digital transformation, transparency culture, uh, fight against corruption, terrorism, and involvement of citizenship to restore the trust of the national institutions. Uh, president, ladies and gentlemen, each one of us is breathing the ocean breeze, which is characterized by this island. We are in an African country that went through armed conflict that over 30 years uh, brought the hope of the Angolans down. But today we are moving forward firmly, facing the reconciliation, the peace road on the national reconciliation. And we intend to have to achieve the peace which we gained in 2002 as the main driver for uh, economic development. These are essential factors to consolidate our democracy. Unity amongst all Angolans, stability, durable uh, stability, and permanent through actions in favor of peace and stability in Africa, and in particular in the Great Lakes region. This is an undoubtable contribution that took our president to the title of peace champion by the African Union. We need to assure that our citizens live 
in peace and are able to contribute for development. And that our demographic location drives us to have quality education, technical training advanced, so that our youth, which is our greatest wealth, can participate with higher knowledge, determination for progress and prosperity of our nations. War should not, should not be necessary for peace. We should cultivate peace to avoid war. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like, on behalf of all delegates present here, I would like to thank His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Angola, João Manuel Gonçalves Lourenço, for his unconditional support during the different phases of the preparation phases of this assembly. that we may achieve all said objectives so that this conference of Luanda should prevail in the memories of all MPs of all continents present here as a strong commitment of all parliamentarians globally for uh, parliamentary action for justice and strong entities. Enjoy your stay in the city of Luanda, city of Kianda, divine culture from our ancestors, our Idiocracy, where we leave the oceans of our coastal areas, where we have the empires of oceans, rivers, mountains. Kianda greets you with open arms to all of us, and it blesses you to the success of this conference.